So I will immediately leave uh, Josh uh, presenting 10 things you don't know about ADAC, but you can do. And I would like to thank Josh uh, to help organize Intersync. So because currently is in a region that is hit by a bad hurricane, not direct hit, but uh, we really appreciate your help, Josh. Go on. Hey guys, com check first, and let's see if we can get my slides up here. We can set. And uh, that's gonna be, we're gonna do this one. Okay, you should see my slide deck, is that right? Yeah, go on. Great, so uh, my name is Josh and I'm kind of filling in here. Uh, our presenter wasn't able to make it, so with Ralph's help, we were able to put together a slide deck and we were hoping to show folks um, at least 10 things that uh, they don't know how to do in ATAC. So there's a lot of amazing features in ATAC that um, I, for one, am always learning about almost every day, especially being on the Discord server. Um, hoping to share a few of those with everybody. So let's get started. Um, and of course, I'm not going to the next slide deck. Let's try this. Uh, okay, so the first thing is the manual. Most people probably don't even realize that there's an ATAC user manual built right into ATAC. Um, it can be reached by going into settings and then support, and you'll see the ATAC user manual. Also, you'll have the release change log, which is really cool at keeping up with uh, what are the recent changes in your version of ATAC. Uh, there's also a um, data set instructions, uh, which is a text file that explains um, where you can put your DTAD, your GRG, and your other um, files. So very handy. I recommend uh, checking those out. The uh, manual is a wealth of information. Uh, next, so now that you've got ATAC and you want to make some custom settings, you want to, you want to change some of your settings, um, the settings menu can be a little daunting. There's just so many options in there, which is great, um, but you will inevitably probably have a hard time finding that one thing you remember seeing and you can't find it again. Uh, use the search bar up top and start typing out what you can remember. Uh, we have a, a couple of photos here, example of encryption and, and meshing. And uh, that'll really help you find that location until you uh, get it memorized. Another thing you wanna do is uh, save the settings. I think we touched on that on a slide deck later on, but you can save some of your settings and your preferences also uh, to your phone. So uh, next, uh, I think we kind of talked about encryption a little bit, or some of the other speakers did. Um, when ATAC is being used in a mesh environment, so specifically not when connected to a server, uh, not talking about TS, uh, TLS or SSL encryption here, you can actually encrypt the data traffic with uh, AES. So you can define a uh, passkey, passphrase, or whatnot. It's actually a generated key, so you're not actually typing in um, uh, like a passphrase, excuse me. So you can generate this key, and then uh, you want to make sure you pre-share that with everybody else, and everybody on a, say, an untrusted net, maybe it's guest Wi-Fi, maybe it's um, Wi-Fi in an event or something like that. Think of a, a large uh, coliseum or something like that. You can share your uh, data, you can, your, air tra your ATAC traffic, and uh, no worries about anybody else seeing anything. Also a good way if you have uh, a giant uh, airsoft event, for example, you could have two teams sharing the same Wi-Fi and just make sure you change, you guys uh, each have your own keys there and you can uh, uh, not have to worry about each team seeing each other. Uh, another thing, uh, it can be used on zero tier. Zero tier is a layer two VPN that you can use for um, linking all of your ATAC, even WinTAC, other devices, and uh, is commonly used in the community when you uh, do not want to stand up a server, either a real TAC server or, or a free TAC server. So uh, you can use it in that scenario as well. I, I, I do recommend checking out Zero Tier. It's a pretty interesting uh, application. And Josh? Huh? Yes, sir. That link at the bottom of the page takes you to the how to configure zero tier for TAC. Yes, and uh, so Ralph uh, shared some slides a while ago. He had uh, done a uh, how-to, which really helps someone. This is great for a new team. Um, you're excited about ATAC. You want to bring ATAC to your fire department, your search and rescue department. You don't have any radios or anything like that. 
you can still use ATAC in a group, um, in, a, in a large group, by using LTE and something like zero tier. Uh, you don't have to worry about rolling your own open VPN server or anything too technical. Zero tier is very friendly. And again, with the slides, um, uh, Ralph put together a very good presentation and tutorial how to uh, get tied in with using zero tier. Very interesting and I highly recommend it for, for new folks wanting to try out zero tier. And, and one uh, more thing, go you ahead. can also connect that your, your home or office network to your uh, phone-based networks. You can have WinTAC and all of your ATAC devices on the same network. Over. Yeah, and that's actually how I use it myself. I run WinTAC here at home, and anytime I'm running um, uh, ATAC on mine or my wife's phone, um, we easily just see everybody because we'll have zero tier running in the background. It's very uh, battery friendly, um, and it's a good alternative if you're just not set up or not ready to run a, uh, a server implementation on a Pi or Docker, whatever you run. So I definitely recommend checking that out. And I, I will make these slides available so that uh, you guys can go more in depth on some of these links that we've provided. There's gonna be some links in the slides further ahead uh, for some much more detailed information that uh, we just can't dive completely down into on the slides. So another awesome feature um, that most people probably will never even realize it's there, whether you use your finger or you happen to use a pen on your, uh, on your uh, phone, you can double tap and hold, and then you can slide your finger up or down, and that's an easy way to zoom in or out of the map if you don't wanna use two fingers for whatever reason. Uh, pretty handy little feature, also comes in handy later on, you may see as we talk about DEX. So speaking of DEX, um, this is another one, I'm not gonna show the entire video, but um, Ralph set up a, um, a video to explain some of these features and how to start them, and it, it um, goes into detail on uh, starting DEX, how to use it, how to use uh, this specific feature. DEX is Samsung, excuse me, Samsung specific, and it kind of allows a desktop environment for, um, you can, for example, send it to your wireless screen. In my case, uh, my TV will support it through, um, uh, I believe Chromecast or something like that. Um, so you can wirelessly send a giant version of ATAC to your screen. Um, but then the controls aren't necessarily friendly. One of the settings that you can go in here is enabling DEX friendly controls that really makes a difference. And you'll also get a, a little slider bar that goes on the uh, left side of your screen, right underneath that uh, kind of compass uh, heading deal there. So very, very handy and I recommend checking it out. And if you have if you have a Sang, Samsung and hit a phone that is, a DEX enabled phone, I definitely recommend checking it out. It's a pretty cool feature. Also very cool to be able to throw your uh, phone up on a projector or something like that in DEX mode, it's pretty cool. That slider, especially in portrait mode though, is awesome even if you don't have a DEX and you don't have a Samsung. Oh. Very, very cool and I, I haven't myself tried it too much. I don't use DEX as much, um, probably as I should, but it is very cool. And uh, now that I've learned that you can actually change the to DEX friendly controls, I, I think I'll be using it a little bit more. One thing I didn't really notice on all the other slides, I didn't touch on this, is uh, enable globe display mode. This will actually turn, um, in ATAC it'll stretch your maps kind of and try to make everything rectangular instead of representing the globe as a real 3D globe. That setting is also one that you may wanna try out. Um, you don't get these, stretched uh, maps if you're at northern or southern latitudes. So I also recommend checking that out. I didn't really touch on that on the slide. So now that you've got ATAC and you're enjoying it, inevitably you're gonna wanna add lots of maps. Um, maybe it's maps for your specific um, geographic area, your county. Um, maybe they're um, uh, maps uh, of any sort, really. It, your imagination uh, is the limit there. ATAC is very good at displaying many different types of maps. Some maps are much more intensive than others. GeoTIFF specifically is a very common format to use, and they can be rather large, um, especially if you've captured your imagery from drones, like um, PIX4D is mentioned on here in Drone Deploy. You can send your drone, capture your entire neighborhood, and get some amazing imagery, uh, much higher detail than what you'd have from say Google Maps or or anything else publicly available. So the detail is really there, but you'll pay for that in your CPU usage. There is definitely some tools out there such as GDAL, uh, TileMill, Meperative, Meperative, excuse me, however you pronounce that, 
um, that can really streamline um, your map usage. You can convert them to other formats, um, such as MB tiles, uh, SQLite. I think we're going to touch on this on another um, slide here in a second. But uh, just know that if you are running into some resource limitations potentially with your phone because of large maps, um, there are some alternatives out there to uh, pre-process those, pre -process those or change those into um, other map types. Um, an often overlooked tool inside of ATAC is the GeoCam plugin. And um, Ralph has a pretty good presentation on it here. Um, I'm sure everyone is familiar with being able to take a photo on your phone and also see the tagged um, information in the EXIF, in the EXIF header, potentially of your, your GPS position. ATAC kind of takes that a step further. I should say GeoCam takes it a step further and will tag some more information. And you can kind of see it in the screenshot here where you actually get your field of view and other information um, tied in and uh, is very useful, especially when you're coming back and looking at these photos and uh, you want more than just the GPS position. Which way was I looking? What was my angles? Um, what was my field of view? You can mark up all of the imagery, which um, is incredibly useful. So a lot of folks don't realize that tool is in there. The GeoCam plugin is um, usually included with ATAC um, that's in the Play Store. That version doesn't seem to be working for some reason. so. We've made, uh, Ralph has gone ahead and shared it out here at this location on the slide so that everybody can uh, can use it. So now that you have your base layer maps, everyone has added their versions uh, or what's already in there. I wanna say OpenStreetMaps and there's a lot that are included in ATAC and there's a lot that can be added afterwards. Most folks when they do that are adding it as a base layer. So what you see is what you get, and you can't really do overlays unless you consider looking at adding it um, in a different manner. You can add these uh, definitions or other files in the ATAC GRG folder, and um, you can overlay other maps on top of your base layer map. So a good uh, representation of this might be, say you were running just satellite imagery as your base layer, but you also want to display maybe a rain layer, a, a, a precipitation layer or a traffic layer to be able to overlay that. Really, again, your imagination is the limit. You can stack the different imagery, and I wanna say you can only do these two stacks, that is a base layer and another layer on top of that. Uh, and you can use it in very different formats from GeoTIFFs, you can adjust your transparencies and everything else. Um, very handy feature, um, trying to overlay whatever map you might, you might need. We're gonna to touch more on this in a second on another slide, but. Uh, if you're on a fire or something like that and you want to overlay your park boundaries or um, current fire boundaries, whatever it might be, there's um, a lot of options there besides just the standard uh, base layer maps. You can overlay as many layers as you want, but it gets awesome. useless after the second, after, after you've added the first one plus the base layer, it's pretty much useless. Maybe we'll expand on that in ATAC layer because I definitely think layers is a... Uh, important feature. And just being able to add two layers though, uh, really, really helps out. Um, along with the layers functionality, we're kind of bringing us into the next one, which is um, building layouts. So you can take a, let's just say a regular building layout, such as what's shown here, whether it's your house, a stadium, uh, whatever, you know, whatever you need, you can take it as a JPEG that is. So no, um, geo-rectified information built into a JPEG by default. Um, you can take an image that is um, has no size or geo information built into it. And you can use the rubber sheet tool, which is included in ATAC, to geo-rectify it. That means place it on a map and make it scale proper. You can see in this case that it's scaled to uh, match its uh, satellite imagery. And you can, maybe that's an internal map. Maybe that's a call out of uh, layer or the first level of a building, the second layer of a building, whatever you might have. Extremely helpful tool. And we also have a tutorial linked here um, from Ralph as well. So uh, highly recommend it, very cool. And uh, imagine if you had like a, I think his tutorial shows it, a park, for example, a park map. Any sort of map or whatever you want to bring in, you can bring into ATAC, even if it's not geo-rectified, even if it's not a geo-tiff or anything like that, pretty handy. Yesterday I had to go to a big building I'd never been to before. 
So as I went in, I just took a picture of the uh, emergency exit plan and plopped it in like this. And I had the whole thing easily rectified for the day. Awesome. And I mean, you can do it with malls or, you know, whatever, whatever you need. Um, we had a tutorial, a uh, testimonial of a person that uh, I believe he was a firefighter that was mentioned previously. You can easily overlay that they were operating in a school. You can easily overlay the uh, school laid out if you have that available. Um, so that might help show all the room numbers. Very handy, very handy stuff. And uh, Josh, I know that uh, you are started later because of me, so I take responsibility, but only to inform you that we have the last five minutes. Copy that. I'm going to squeeze through these really quick. Um, so I won't touch on every single aspect. Um, one thing to know in ATAC is you can bring in all sorts of different video feeds. Um, as an example here, I've used my uh, home security feed. It's an RTSP stream. RTSP streams come from many different security cameras, um, IP cameras for your home, uh, NVRs, um, such as Wise Cams, stuff like that. Uh, there's functionality in there. You can basically bring your video feeds into ATAC. Uh, definitely something to check out. Um, so initially this presentation was 10 things. Um, we have a few more. I guess I'll use up a little bit of the time and then try to save some for QA. And uh, sorry, Corvo, how much time do we have there? Just about four minutes? Oh, uh, let's say five minutes because you started late. Okay, well, these are these will go pretty quick. We're We're in the home stretch. Um, so one of the things you can change if you want to customize ATAC, you can adjust the or, or make your own splash screen and about screen. Uh, you can basically just place your PNG file in the uh, ATAC support folder, make sure it's named properly, and you can get your own little customized version of ATAC. Pretty cool little, little feature. Uh, the toolbar. Most people don't realize that you can um, customize the toolbar. Uh, the steps here define how to get in there. Um, remove or replace, edit, uh, rearrange the uh, toolbar. And then you can also export and save those settings um, so that you uh, you don't have to redo that every time you're wiping out ATAC or adding it to a new phone and, and, and whatnot. Um, GPX tracks, all these next slides are gonna kind of be similar. Um, track history, GPX and routes are all very similar terminology, but different pieces. Um, in ATAC, as you're running around, you're gonna generate a track history. That track history can be exported, either you can set it up before or after your trips, uh, but you can create a GPX file. You can later use those GPX files to make routes. Where did I go? Is this gonna be a route I'm gonna use every day? Is that my commute back and forth to work? Or maybe it's a uh, hiking trail. You can definitely use these GPX files um, and uh, very handy to know how to work with those. With those GPX files, if you want to simulate um, a route in ATAC, you can actually run a separate outside application called Lakito. And uh, you can download that from the Play Store. You'll put your phone in developer mode, and then you can create a um, route inside of Lakito, and it will actually try to trace the roads if you select road. Um, and you can then hit play, and you will fake GPS location to ATAC and ATAC will pretend to basically go down a route. Very handy for simulating, testing, and so forth. Just maybe you're trying to learn functionality inside of ATAC. Uh, maybe you, for some reason, don't want people to know where your position is on ATAC and you want to fake it. Uh, pretty cool tool. Um, Zello, um, and I'll try to wrap up here really quick here, um, Corvo. So Zello is um, not built into ATAC, but um, if you are a new team and trying to use um, ATAC, if you do not have handheld radios, one of the things you're looking for usually to uh, coordinate with other folks is uh, in, in addition to ATAC is some way to have voice comms. So Zello is a great uh, free um, tool that you can basically make a, um, uh, a channel, a net, so to speak, and be able to communicate with your peers. Discord also offers this functionality, but you can create a PTT button that overlays on top of ATAC, and um, you don't have to get out of ATAC like you would normally into an application. You wouldn't have to bounce between the two applications to talk. So being able to throw a PTT button over top of ATAC, you remain, you, you stay inside of ATAC and keep that SA and you don't uh, drop out of it cool feature um, that you might want to check out if you're looking at either of those apps, Zello or Discord. Uh, and by the way, Josh, we have a user called Wesley, aka Goss, uh, that 
managed to connect a real Baofeng with uh, Zello yes. so that you have uh, IP to a uh, real radio connection. And yes. I try that, it's really super, super cool. Yeah, and your imagination is the limit on that too. I mean, you can bridge um, back and forth with Roip, VoIP, whatever you want to call it. But um, there's definitely some cool things that the users in the community have created. And uh, this kind of goes in hand in hand with it. Um, another thing, once you've got ATAC and you have a large amount of imagery, you can use tools such as the data sync tool, I want to say, that is inside of TAC server. If you do not have access to a TAC server, you can use something like Resilio Sync or SyncThing to sync large amounts of maps, just basically almost effortlessly between all of your groups of phones and your PCs potentially running uh, WinTAC. It works for other things besides map files, um, DTED, um, you can uh, even share like your mesh encryption key. So imagine you wanna rotate your keys, you literally just change a file on one phone and it spits it out to all the rest that have connectivity. It really makes syncing all of your devices uh, with that type of data pretty, um, pretty easy. One thing to note, do not sync the entire ATAC folder. You'll have issues if you do that. All the phones won't, won't want to talk together. And uh, we're in the home stretch here. Um, quitting without confirming. Most folks, when, you, uh, when you're trying to exit ATAC, you forget that you need to go up to the, the little buttons up in the corner and actually choose exit. Uh, you can actually change it so that you don't have to do that and ATAC won't remain running in the background. So folks that uh, you don't want to leave it and forget ATAC running in the background uh, if you uh, don't select the proper way to exit. You can also turn on grid lines by default. It's another setting. Just go ahead and search for grid inside the settings menu. Um, and I'm going to kind of probably end it here. I don't want to go too much further. I want to see how many slides that we have left. Oh, that's pretty much it. So uh, this is a tutorial on how to uh, get DTAD. We have the entire world's worth of DTED zero. You can also get specific areas. Um, please come back and look at the slide and the uh, tutorials in here. If you're interested in loading uh, 3D terrain data, it really uh, takes ATEC a step further. Lastly, um, that same elevation data, you can use, uh, you can view a heat map, which would show you kind of a rainbow uh, color map um, that would um, detail your um, height, in the, the terrain height in your area. Very handy feature. Uh, this is one of the most important slides, I think, in the entire deck. Um, without users um, that are giving back to the community, whether it's something like a translation, um, filling out a spreadsheet and being able to translate into another native language, submitting your crash logs to the developers, improving the wiki, um, anything like that, any way you can give back to the community, please don't hesitate. Those folks on Discord are definitely willing to help through the process. Um, any way we can make tech better uh, is really gonna grow the community. So uh, please do consider that. There's so many ways to contribute. And with that, that is gonna be the end of the presentation. Um, I don't think we have much time for questions. Yeah, we are already three minutes uh, over the time. Thank you for taking some time off. Uh, again, I apologize that I went over time, but no one. <laughs> Nope, no problem. <laughs> no, I want to thank uh, Ralph for um, really doing a majority of these slides. Thank you for your time with that, Ralph, your time and your help. I really appreciate it. And thanks, Corvo, for putting this together. You are very welcome.